to Rowan University for today's women's lacrosse match between the Royals of the University of Scranton and the Profs of Rowan University. It's now my pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, to introduce to you today's starting lineups. First for the University of Scranton, number three, Grace Gabulis. Number four, Erin Rich. Number six, Alex Dato. Number seven, Molly McCarran. Number eight, Grace Lane. Number nine, Kaylee Stalder. Number 10, Devin Tabajewski. Number 15, Jillian Lopez. Number 18, Nicolina Morrow. Number 19, Eileen Hewitt. Number 35, Karina Rutger. And in goal for the Royals, number 99, Lauren Bolness. This is Coach Sage Fry, and the head coach is Chrissy Cascavage. And the rest of the Royals of the University of Scranton. And now let's meet the starting lineup for the Profs of Rowan University. Number five, Riley O'Brien. Number six, Fiona Lockhart. Number seven, Trish Gillen. Number 14, Sophia Shido. Number 20, Sydney Helmick. Number 21, Hannah Lombardo. Number 22, Jenna O'Neill. Number 23, Elena Corson. Number 24, Molly Green. Number 27, Callista Burke. Number 28, Katie Montanaro. And in goal for the props, number 55, Mel Rogers. Assistant coaches for the props, Nicole Valiente, Lindsey K. Smith, and the head coach is Lindsey Delaney. And the rest of the props of Rowan University. Our officials for today, or Maureen Deswill, Christina Jackson, and Steve Kudabe. And now we ask everyone to please rise as we honor our great country, the United States of America, the playing of our national anthem. and Rowan University promote good sports conduct by student athletes, coaches, staff, and spectators. We request your cooperation by supporting the participants and officials in a positive manner. Profanity, racist, sexist, or homophobic comments, or any other intimidating actions directed at official student athletes, coaches, team representatives, or spectators will not be tolerated and are grounds for removal from the site of competition.
here in Glassboro on a crisp Thursday afternoon. Rowan women's lacrosse taking on the Scranton Royals. Alongside my broadcast partner, Justin Locke, I am Tom Hill. Justin, the props coming in with a three and four record. Their last game, a win over Clarkson. Big win, 18 to four. Elena Corson had four goals. Callista Burke had four as well. Molly Green with three. Justin, it's big for the props to get a win here at home against this Scranton team. Yeah, Scranton coming in four and two. Definitely not a team to play around with, and they've, they've done so on behalf of Really, their goal, uh, goalkeeper in the uh, last three years, Boldus, has been kind of their key set point. She kind of only allows nine goals a game. They're scoring double digits in multiple of their four victories. And for a prof team, they've lost a couple close ones to start out this year. And out of three and four, as you said, they lost the last home game here against Skidmore back on the 12th. And looking to rebound here against a team that, again, is fourth in the landmark conference in the Scranton Royals. And for the prof right now, they're fifth. So let's see what they can do here on this uh Thursday afternoon. Face off at midfield at the Owl at midfield. The Prof logo has both the Profs and the Royals ready to take action. This goes into the midfield. It's picked up by Molly Green. She's going to throw it back out and trying to clear it out to the far side. Swarmed by two Royal defenders and the ball is loose now on the ground. It's picked back up trying to clear it out. Now they get it into the hands of Green up near midfield, trying to pass into attacking territory, looking for someone to flip it off to. Had a prof behind her, but she's going to clear it out high. So the pass was intended for Katie Montanero, but now it's into the glove of Burke. Burke Farsat, hounded. Now tries to clear it over to Lombardo. Corson now behind the net, the props go. And that shot is high. Now another pass, and the ball is dropped right near the goal. Props looking to attack. Now into the glove of Corson. Clear out to Lombardo. Props will try to clear it out. Moving is Riley O'Brien. She loses the handle, and it's picked up by Scranton, the Royals will take it the other way. Full head of steam for Eileen Hewitt. It's now cleared. Down low go the Royals. Pops trying to stay stout defensively. Justin, the big player for the Royals is Grace Lane, 21 goals on the season. Someone that the Props have to take care of defensively. Spinning, weaving, that shot is up no good from Lane. Right on cue, now a fight for it. Right underneath the goal and it's back into the glove. Now a clear out coming up near the yellow line and now it's picked up by a prof, so they'll take it the other way. Yeah, profs and Royals have turned it over after lengthy possessions and we've got Corson near side trying to stay away here from the Royals. Up near side, it looks like we got a foul called as get a stoppage here. Looks like a foul from behind that time on Reich. Far side, Corson. Hounded by two Royals. Now the clear out, they keep clearing it out to the top. Now over to Lombardo. They're moving Lombardo the cutter. That shot is high of the goal. Looks like it goes out of play. Rowan will retrieve. Full head of steam for Lombardo. And looks like we get a whistle here. See what the call is on. Set of a free position here for Lombardo, left side. Lombardo races in and scores. one nothing props. They get on immediately, and Justin, we did tell you want to score early on this Scranton team, and especially on Boldus, and they did just that. one nothing props. Yeah, Lombardo that time capitalized on the free position. Again, we saw two fouls in that, in that last 35 seconds by the Royals, and for Lombardo, her 12th goal of the season, has been a key piece. Always usually that girl in the middle of the faceoff to start off every time, and 
that time gets set up on an easy free position. She goes straight top of the net, and it's 1 0 props. 1 0 props, 100th goal on the season for the props as a team. So we're going to get a face off here at midfield as Lombardo meets at midfield. Props looking to build on that initial goal. Took but 100 goals. They're only behind Stockton in the end, Jack, with goals scored, but they've also allowed the second most as well. So blows, and it's into the glove of Scranton, and they're running, pushing the pace. As that running shot is up, no good, and it's saved by Rogers. So the props will take it the other way. A good defensive stop there, and the props looking to push near the yellow line, and they get it up ahead. Riley O'Brien near side. She loses the handle, fought for it. Yeah, we talked about Rogers in the goal here for Rowan. Both times, their best score was face to face with her Grace Lynn, and she's missed both tries. And it's a good start here for Rogers inside the goal. All right, by Montanero. Looking for something to develop near side. Now clear out near midfield. On the move, Shivo. Now over to the far side. Props have a player right by the goal. Now behind the goal, still hounded by a couple of black jerseys. Who out comes? Lombardo. Over to the top in O'Brien. Ball of movement. Now behind the net. Props keep on passing here, looking for something to develop. No shot cleared up, and that one's up and through. Two nothing props just like that. Goal scored by Trish Gillen. So Lombardo with one, Gillen with one. Two nothing props immediately here from the shoot. Yeah, Gillen six on the team in goals with the eighth one. She pushed through there. And it initially did look like an open look. She had three different black jerseys in the area, and she bounces it off two hops, and it gets in there. And Bold is at a tough time here against Rowan. It's 2-0. And we've seen two shots from both sides. Lane's missed both of hers. But Lombardo and obviously now Trish Gillen, they're capitalized on both looks. And it's imperative for the props to score, Justin. As you mentioned, they have no problem scoring on the season so far. Their problem has been in the defensive department. So getting out to an early lead is big as we get a face off here at midfield. You talk about two of their three, should say two of their four losses are by one exactly. So it, it comes down to if you can keep the other team off the board early, something they couldn't do last time out at home here against Skidmore. Clear out. Shiva running far side. She beats her defender. Now it's going to clear it out. Puck movement still far side. Ball movement with two black jerseys in the area. Now a clear out up ahead to Molly Green. Throws it back out far side. Now back to O'Brien at the top. Far side. Props have been on the attack all game long so far. And now the cutter couldn't corral the ball. And it's into the glove of the Scranton Royals. And it's still loose. Picked up near side by Lombardo. Now a clear out to O'Brien. Far side, the props, a lot of passing. Trying to attack here, and that pass is errand, and it's into the glove of the Scranton Royals. They'll clear it back out to the goaltender, Boldus. A good play there by Hewitt was the one to kind of get in there. Initially got the turnover the prior time, but then lost it. But they tried to get a cutter in there for Rowan, and they, they split it away. Still looking for someone to dish the ball up to, and now gets it up ahead near midfield, and a fight for it. Jillian Lopez now up ahead past the yellow line. Now Scranton looking to attack and at least answer. The runner Lopez on the move with two white jerseys. Nearer and a save by Rogers. What a save. Full head of steam. Lopez looking to answer for the Royals, but to no avail. That time Lopez came blazing in there and had a straight shoot there against Rogers. Looks like it's going to set up a shot here for Lopez. So. See what they can do here for Scranton. This is a free position from the middle side where we saw Lombardo capitalize on that left side on the other end. And three shots for the props. Zero so far for the Royals. And that one saved by Rodgers. And the props are going to take it the other way. 
Here up out Shivo, now far side. Up ahead, the props go past midfield, past the yellow line. Now on the attack, far side for the props. It's Fiona Lockhart looking to clear it. And a fight for it, and bodies collide. So we get a stoppage here. Like involved in the fray was Callista Burke for the props with the Scranton player. So Scranton will take over. It looked to be Katie uh, Rucker there, the one down on the hit. She's all good. Now running far side for the Royals. On the attack is Rich. Clear out to Lopez, right near the yellow line. Hounded by O'Brien, but just a dish here. Scranton created more opportunities in these last couple of minutes, but they still haven't put anything on the board, Justin. But they're on the attack here right behind the prof net. They had four shots, four misses here against Rogers in the goal. Great defense so far for the profs as Rich looking to dish it off to somebody. She can't find anybody. Now she does the give to Hewitt. Spin move, Hewitt, shot is high, no good. Over the goal, that was an opportunity for the Royals to try to cut into this deficit. And the props still staying stout on the defensive. And we get a clock stoppage here. Just tuned in, Tom Hill, Justin Locke on the call for Rowan Athletics. Women's lacrosse. Props looking to even up their record. They're three and four, looking to get back up to 500 at four and four. And now the dish is errand. And it's fielded back out there by Lane. I haven't seen much of Lane so far for the Royals, although she can get going as she has all season long. As that shot is up and through. Right on cue, Grace Lane cuts the deficit to two to one, and the Royals are on the board. Yeah, her team leading 22nd goal of this season, a pretty one. I guess she missed the first two shots on Rodgers, but in their fifth attempt that time inside the goal works for them. And now it's Swiss to lead 2 1. So we're just around halfway through this first period. Grace Lane. Grace Lane, 20 second goal, Justin, as you mentioned. And, you know, this Scranton team, not as many goals as the Profs, but, you know, with the Profs, their biggest struggle so far this season has been in the prevention category, not the scoring. So 2 1 Profs. Grace Lane just scored that goal for the Scranton Royals to cut it to 2-1. Two to one. So we have a face-off here at midfield. Clear out a fight for it now at midfield. It's picked up by Lombardo. She's going to bump it out to the far side. Now into the attacking zone for the Profs. And that one's dropped by Burke. She picks it up. Pass in. Rowan on the attack. Lockhart looking to get it back out to O'Brien, and she does. Lombardo at the left wing. Corson, puck movement here. That shot is up, and that one looks like they're going to wave it off. Yeah, I think she went inside the uh, inner circle. Not allowed there. It looked to be, would have been Gillen's second goal of the afternoon, but I think she tripped up just a tad, maybe a foot too short. Rich clears it up the other way for the Royals, now running near side. A host of prop defenders trying to get rid of the ball, and it looks like a attempt there by O'Neill. Yeah, good swipe there from O'Neill, kind of prevents it from Rich kind of getting any closer as they still have possession now. Stolpler clears it out. Now running far side, it's been moved by Hewitt, a pass in for Lopez, and that's no good. Into the mid of Rodgers, and the Profs will take it the other way. Yeah, the Profs have looked good on that side of things as Lopez was trying to cut through the middle, and again, the Profs have not really looked any inside looks besides those looks from Lane. Calista Burke full head of steam. Now up ahead. And that one's up. Also whistled call. off. It was a great speed burst there from Burke. There's a whistle back about 25 yards out prior to the shot. It, it looks, looks like, like it's going to be free possession. So another opportunity here for the Prost to kind of get another goal on the board. Shot is up. 
And it's through. Callista Burke answers right back for the props. They're up 3-1. It ties the team lead and goes back to 20 apiece. Her with Lena Corson. It's been a master class between those two girls. Last Rose couple of games, they scored four goals in each in the Calista last game. Burke. And they're looking to kind of keep things going. We've seen, again, three goals for three different scores here for the Profs. Kind of like to see that a lot because sometimes, especially for uh, really run when you see the same goal scores and then once those girls are limited, you kind of get cut off. And that's how their losses have happened, especially late in games. It's only the first period, and we've seen Scranton have looks. They haven't, they haven't connected on them, but if they do, this game's going to get closer than it needs to be. And it is so paramount when you get – multiple different sources of offense from your players, Justin, but also the creation that the props have had on the offensive, and they're going to try to get something to develop far side. Shivo clears it out to Burke, and we have a whistle coming far side. He just kind of got pushed from the back side there, so it'll still be cross possession. That uh, looks like it's called on Grace Debulis for Scranton. So she'll head over to the sideline. 3-1 props here in Glassboro. Tom Hill, Justin Locke on the call. Props coming in with a record of three and four, looking to even up and go 500. Scranton comes in at four and two. Props still on the attack. Now out to Lombardo, directing traffic. Now the clear out up to the top. Lowry just checked in for the props. Now behind the Scranton net, looking to score again on Boldus. Lombardo over to Lowry. Back out far side, Callista Burke. Pop still moving the ball around, looking for something to develop, either a passing lane or something to potentially shoot. Nothing has developed just yet. Back out to the top. Green wanted to make a move, but now she'll just dish it off to Lombardo on the left side. Now the cutter, Lombardo, she scores! Hannah Lombardo, 4-1 props. It's been all rowing here early. Yeah, Lombardo now her second goal of the afternoon, 13th of the season. Another good one where she makes the cut. They get an easy dime down low, and it's her against Boldis. And so far, the props have had her numbered this afternoon. And they've looked great early, and it's been pretty dominant. Again, they have more time of possession. They're using their clock, their play clock a lot more, and that's... They're, just, they're not wasting any time. They might not rush to get a shot off, and but if you get the goal to count, it doesn't matter how much time it takes. You have four one props, and Justin, as we've mentioned all call long, they've just been the more aggressive team in the early going, but Eileen Hewitt looking to answer for the Scranton Royals full head of steam with no resistance. The throw is up, and it's blocked by Rogers. What a save. Fight for a loose ball, and it's into the glove of Rich. She's looking for something to develop near side. Now the clear out back to the top, Tanajewski. We've seen the Royals on their fast paid efforts haven't worked out to their benefit. The cutter, Lopez, for whatever reason, flared out. And now the Royals will just clear out far side, Hewitt. Tries to make a spin move, bounces left, now spins right. Pass in for Lopez, doesn't have a great angle. Now with two props near her, Hewitt thought about the shot. We're gonna get, get a, I believe a foul call. Looks we'll like it'll be another free position here for, we have Hewitt on the left side. Last time they were on the free position, they missed, so see if Rogers can hold her own again. Eileen Hewitt with 16 goals on the season and make it 17 as they answer, Eileen Hewitt. 4-2 row, and Scranton looking to cut into that deficit. Yeah, good play there from Hewitt. Again, they missed out on the last time of the free position. That's kind of your free look, and they, again, now have split their, their two trips there at that shot, and they now make it a little bit closer. Still got a little under four minutes here in this first period, and it's been a high-scoring affair we've seen, and again, Boldis allows nine goals a game so far. Mel Rogers. Right around the same mark, so we're, we're in for a good high-scoring match between two teams looking for their fifth and fourth win of the season. Eileen Hewitt, the freshman for the Scranton Royals. So 4-2 game. A couple minutes to go here in this first period, and it's Elena Corson 
at midfield for the props looking to win this faceoff. And now they clear it. We get another stoppage. And now they resume play. So Hewitt downfield for the Royals now near side. Dish to Rich. Back out to the top 10 of Jeske. Nothing developing yet. Trying to find something for the Royals. Now back near side, Rich. Far side, it looks like they're curling around to try to create. Now back into the glove of Hewitt. Far side, nothing developing just yet, and that ball is loose, but we got a foul called on the props. They call it O'Malley Green there, and it'll set up another free position on that left hash side. So see if Scranton can kind of do some deja vu here against Rodgers. Grace Lane, who scored earlier that throw, is up and through. Grace Lane, for the second time today, we have a one-point game at 4-3. to three. Yeah, Lane now 23 goals on the season. Again, just talk about it. They do the exact same thing they just did on the other end with Hewitt. And now it's a one-goal game. And that only took about 40 seconds off the clock after that foul on the initial faceoff. And now you got to think, if you're rowing, it's kind of what happens. They get on the board first, but there's, a, there's that, that silent period they have, and that's kind of why this, these games have gotten really close to 10-9 loss, 11-12 loss, and stuff like that as we approach the last three minutes here of the first period. Yeah, namely Hewitt and Lane, the players that you have to circle on your opposing roster going into this game if you're the props, and they've really shown up here as we've gotten further along in this first period in this game. And Scranton coming off of an 18-16 win against Stevenson, so they can score, Justin, and they have in the last few minutes. Yeah, both teams scored 18 goals in their last game. As another foul there committed by the Profs on the faceoff, hopefully doesn't set up another easy look. Ball loose, now Hewitt is hounded, and it's swatted out. Just able to clear it out is Hewitt now near midfield. Fight for it with Nicolina Morrow, and now it's into the glove of Rowan. Swarmed near side for the props is Lockhart. She's able to clear it out to Corson. Now Corson with a full head of steam. Three black jerseys near her. Near side, Gillen. She has a goal in this game. Now they keep clearing it out. Props looking to put goal number five on the board. Ball is loose. Now into the hands of Molly Green, she's able to score. They answer just like that, 5-3 Rowan. Yeah, that time Molly Green split the gap there, almost was turned over on the pass from Gillen. She splits through two different defenders, gets the bounce Rowan shot over top of Boldis, and Molly Green, another Molly top Green. scorer on this team, ranks third now with her 18th of the season. And okay, we just talked about really Scranton kind of finding the rhythm, and now the cross right back on the board. A good sign there for Molly Green. Gillen with one, Lombardo with two, Green now with one, Callista Burke had one. So four different props have hit Pater, for a lack of a better term. 5-3 game, a couple minutes to go here in this first period. Faceoff coming at midfield. Riley O'Brien looking to win it for the props. Up in the air, and it's tipped away and into the glove of Hewitt. Bounces it far side. Now the clear up, ball movement. Jillian Lopez had the angle, but she's just going to clear it now near side. Rich circling around the prop defense to the hands of Stalter. Stalter looking for something to develop now back to Lane. She's been dangerous for the Royals. Tanajeski at the top makes a spin move now with two white jerseys near her. She hesitates, gets it into the glove of Hewitt. Royals passing it around. And looks like early on props were on the attack, but now the Royals have really taken over. And now that shot is up no good from Stalter. It goes past the goalie Rogers. 
Yeah, Rogers, good deflection there off the bounce. Always a tough time to adjust to, and they did there. Lopez far side. Aaron Rich, full head of steam, now bounces left. High shot, no good. So there was an opportunity there for the Royals to make this a one goal game, but they will retain. Hewitt at the right wing. Makes a spin move in and cuts. Now two white jerseys near her, high lob into Lopez and it's blocked by Rogers. What a phenomenal defensive stop. And the props stand tall, Scranton does not capitalize. That time Lopez tried to do like a little bit of a short arm shot, trying to catch Rogers sleeping and she didn't get it. And now under 40 seconds to go, see if the props can add on to their scoring. Shivo trying to clear it far side, right near the sideline. Actually, now she does. Midfield, props have to hurry under a minute to play in this first period. It's dropped by O'Brien. A clear out back behind the midfield line. Trying to clear it out near side to Tanner, who's just checked back in. Props on the attack. Now the cutter, that shot's no good to fight for it. And looks like it's into the hands of a Scranton player. So they're able to stand on their defensive side. And that's gonna do it in this first period. Rowan five, Scranton three, a lot of offense. Here in the early going from Glassboro, alongside Justin Locke, I'm Tom Hill. We'll be right back here on Rowan Athletics. Do all your hours too before you need to get into a union. Back here in Glassboro, second period of action, Rowan five, Scranton three. 
Tom Hill, Justin Locke on the call from Rowan Athletics and a draw at midfield. Props win. Now a clear out by Molly Green. Green near side. Back behind her into the glove of Montanero. Now up near the prop logo at midfield. Props now moving left to right. Scranton moving right to left in this second period. Far side, Shivo. Props looking for something to develop now past the yellow line. Trying to get on the attack. They were on the attack early in that first period, Justin. Then Scranton kind of took the momentum back late in that period. They saw four goal scorers of the five total, and Lombardo being the one with two. Lombardo now near side the props, looking for something to develop. Gillen, who had a goal early in that first period. Now back to Lombardo. Far throw here to Lowry. Lowry back to the top. Callista Burke looking to make a move. Now she'll just dish it off. Ball movement for the props. Now Lombardo had the angle to try to shoot. She'll just clear it back out to Lowry. Tries to get her defender off her spot. Now an open player near side is Lockhart. Props passing it around into the glove of Lombardo. Back to Lowry. Been a lot of passing. Now the shot is wide. Lowry tried to put it in and get the props on the board. So it's going to go the other way as Scranton will take over. Yeah, great defense there from Scranton. Got the shot clock to expire after the miss on the left side. And Scranton, it did train in 90 seconds off that clock. But see the Prost can play some defense. Ball loose now. Looked like Callista Burke tried to pick it up. Now it'll be picked up by Burke. Lombardo over on the far side, pressed by Hewitt. Now tries to clear out, loses it for a second. Pass in to Corson. Now behind the net is Gillen. And a move by Burke, and looks like we get a foul called. Yeah, she got swiped from behind there. Karen or Rucker with the foul for Scranton. So another free position, this time for Burke. Burke now tied in the goals for the team after her one earlier. Possibly could take the lead here. Calista Burke runs it and has it swatted away by Boldus. A phenomenal defensive stop, but the props trying to clear it out, but it is cleared out by Karina Rucker. So Scranton will take over now to the goalie, Boldus, who came out of the net to field that one in the air. Yeah, risky move there from Boulders, makes the play, and unfortunate break there for the Pros. They didn't get that score on that free position shot. High thrown, we have bodies colliding. As hitting the deck, Aaron Rich and Callista Burke. That time Burke kind of just rolled over by accident and she'll go to the sideline and hopefully both are okay, looks like they are. Got a clock stoppage here at the 12.08 mark. 5-3 Profs. Profs have had four different players score goals in that first period. Trish Gillen, Hannah Lombardo, Molly Green, and Callista Burke. Full head of steam here for Hewitt. Dish off near side to Rich. Scranton. Got going late in that first period, as we said. Grace Lane was a big factor for that. Back out to Hewitt, makes a spin. Now to Lane, ball movement for the Royals. Pass in, a lot of traffic there, and now it's a clear out. Back into the glove of Tanajewski, and that shot is up and through. Scored by Aaron Rich, and we got a one Goal game here at 5-4. Scranton on the board first here in this second period. And Justin, it's been back and forth all game long. Goal scored by yeah. Aaron, Rich, Aaron Rich able to Rich. connect. Yeah, Rich did a good job there. Again, initially the cut by Rich didn't work out. She had to take things back out. And she goes for the left-handed side shot. It works. And 13th goal of the season is a good one. And 
Again, it was a silent spell from both sides, especially in that fruits and shot from the Pross. And now they have plenty of time here in this period for the Pross to respond. It's just the lead is getting cut into more and more. So 5-4, Props still clinging to a one-goal lead, 11-26 mark. Looks like we have a timeout here, I believe, by the Props. So, Justin, what do you like so far about the Props here in a period and change so far gone in this ballgame? I like the Props. They, they stay at their own pace. They don't kind of rush a lot of things, and that's what's kind of set up those free position shots that they've capitalized on. They scored two of the five attempts from the pre position. They'd missed that last one that would have been that pivotal to kind of keep their rhythm going. And especially defensive, we've seen Mel Rogers kind of hold her own, even though she has allowed four goals. It could have been six or seven. There's multiple times where it's been down low where we see uh, Rich get a good look or Lane and or Lopez was a, an active cutter. And I think a lot of times when your goalie can kind of keep you within a, a one or two goal uh, spot, especially with the lead, you had a lead by three or four at a point. If you can keep things going, this team can just add to the scoring a little bit. If they can get to double digits, I think they can walk away here with the victory. Yeah, and we all know the offense that the props are able to create. And with the way they've started so far scoring, Justin, you've got to imagine that this game will not end at 5-4, to four, especially with the way Scranton is able to score as well. Yeah, I mean, they average 14 goals coming in the props, do So you kind of think now over 100 goals on the season here in this eighth game of the year. Scranton, again, they, they've scored less goals, but they've also won more games than the Prost. They've played in six, we played in seven. It's kind of an even matchup in that spot where they might have more low scoring games, but they also walk away with the win where the Prost can put up 10 or more, and they've lost three of those games where they put up 10 or more, and that's what you gotta think about. If you're giving up 11 and you only scored 10, you're not gonna walk away with the victory, and that's the difference maker between the two teams. One is more uh, slower paced, they get to their spots when they're on, they're on. But Scranton, they like to go fast. We've seen a lot of times they kind of go coast to coast, and they worked that time for Huey. It's worked on time for free position shots on by Lane. And see what they do out of this timeout. Plenty of time, 11.26 left here in the second period. Grace Lane with two goals so far in this game. Eileen Hewitt with one, and Aaron Rich able to get on the board. The senior for the Scranton Royals now back conference over game action takes place at midfield for the props Hannah Lombardo and props are able to win it now far side Shivo full head of steam now the dish to Burke props looking to answer back to the glove of Molly Green Lowry up at the top now the dish to Riley O'Brien. Near side, ball movement for the props. Corson, been a quiet day so far for her. Props looking for something to develop. It looks like Scranton has gotten better defensively as this game has progressed. And that pass is errand, and it's going to be intercepted by the Royals. So Scranton will take it the other way, a full head of steam for McCarran. Yeah, it could be a costly turnover if the Royals can get back on the board here. Trying to tie us at 5-5, game that the props were leading by a couple of goals early. As we've detailed on this call, a lot of offense so far as that shot is up. No good by Kaylee Stalter. But it's retrieved by the Royals, so they'll try to set something else up. Now into the glove of Rich. Only offense for either squad in this second period. Grace Lane at the top. Going to get her defender off her block, and that shot is up. No good. A save by Rogers. Phenomenal save as she bobbled it for a brief second, but able to corral it defensively. So Scranton's offensive attack is thwarted as that pass is errand intended for Callista Burke near side. And it's scooped up into the air, and it's Burke who tries to get it and she cannot and it's cleared near side here by the Royals. Lexus, Karina Rucker, excuse me, near side and we have a clock stoppage here at the 928 mark. And Molly Green coming off after taking that hit there from Rucker. It's always tough to kind of play that 
like near side spot where they're trying to keep their their balance in, kind of have to absorb the hit there. And that's what she did, and helmet comes in. Rowan looking to set up defensively here near mid midfield. Rucker trying to get it in, and she does to Nicolina Moro. Now up ahead, Scranton trying to tie it. They had an attack just on their last offensive drive, and Mel Rogers able to stop that. Molly McCarron. Now Scranton clears it out near side into the glove of Lane. Movement for the Royals. Lauren Crotty just checked in. Now into the glove of Hewitt. Another clear out for Lane. And it looks like we've got a foul call. Penalty. Yeah, set up another free position here. Looks to be by Lane on that left side and we know how dangerous she's been. Already two goals on the afternoon. Running start, that shot is up and it's no good. As that was hit, I believe that was off the stick of Rogers, but Scranton able to retain. Hewitt finds the cutter, McCarron. Now clear out back to Hewitt. Now over to midside, Crotty. Near side is Lane. Scranton looking to answer. It looks like they've been on the attack a lot more early in this second period. And now the cutter, McCarron, traffic, that shot no good but they're still able to retain. Hewitt stops. Now down low. And swatted away, but saved by Crotty. And now Hewitt near side, and that one's blocked by Rogers. So Scranton able, not able to capitalize as Rogers on back-to-back -back defensive possessions for the props, Justin, able to stop it. Even on the prior one, it was Molly Green who kind of swiped the, the shot look earlier that time by Lane, and the Peralts are now trying to push here left to right. Now this far side. Reeled in by Trish Gillen. Now being pressed by McCabe for the Royals. It's gonna clear it out to Burke, but it's a high pass. Ball near side is into the glove of Burke as she's able to scoop it up. Gillen back to Lowry at the top of the point. Now over near side, Gillen looking for something to open up. Profs trying to get back on the attack here in this second period. So they're underneath the net here and that pass was intercepted for a second by Rucker. But Scranton nevertheless able to get it into the glove of their goalie Boldis. So they're gonna clear it out far side as Karina Rucker looking to get it up near midfield, trying to pass the yellow line swarmed by three yellow jerseys now able to clear it to Hewitt on the attack for Scranton. And that ball is loose. Fight for it, who's gonna get it? Hewitt able to scoop it up. Far side looking to attack. Now over to Jillian Lopez. And trying to create something for the Royals. Ball movement for Scranton. Crotty, now far side. Full head of steam here, and that shot is up, and it's high as Devin Tenajeski tried to tie us at five, but they're able to retain the Royals' do. We've seen a couple high shots, definitely to the left. We've seen Rogers kind of pivot her feet really well and keep it at this one goal game. Third straight offensive possession where looks like Scranton's going to try to capitalize, and that shot is up and through. They finally do. Scored by Eileen Hewitt, her second goal of the game. 5-5, five, five. we're tied, Justin. Yeah, on cue, the Royals capitalize that time, and it looks like, we'll see that's her third goal on the bounce shot, and Hewitt, as you said, her second goal of the afternoon, and that's her 15th goal of the season, second on the team, only behind Lane, and. Again, that one, stuff's going stale. You see what they do. They kind of turn things around. We get a timeout here from Rowan, but overall it's in, it started off, it was all Rowan. We talked about it. I believe it was 4-1 at one point, and ever since they got the one goal back, and it has been three of the last four goals have come from the visiting team here, running all black in the Scranton Royals. Yeah, and Justin, it looks like the Royals have been on the attack 
and it goes without saying so far in this second period. What do the profs need to do to take over that momentum and try to take this lead? A game that they were leading early on, and it looked like they were the more aggressive team, but this Scranton team is the reason they have a winning record here early on this season. They've been able to answer. So what do the profs have to do to try to stop this fire from the Royals? Well, the profs have to obviously initiate offense first here off the faceoff, and they have to capitalize if they get a second chance, especially with the free positions. We've seen the last two or three have been stopped from boldness down low. And if you think of it logically, when you have an opportunity for Rodgers to get two or three stages, which we saw in those last couple of possessions, I kind of touched on it, obviously, Earlier in, in the afternoon, Lane kept missing to start off, and then once Lane kind of got things going, the entire Royals team found a rhythm, and they've they've used the bounce shot especially well over the right side when when Rogers has to go to her left. Usually, when she stands going left to right, she makes a good stop, but when it's right to left, we've seen that Rogers has a hard time doing that, and that's kind of what they've used. They've used it to the back right corner of the of the goal, and we've seen it on both sides when they went left to right, when they went right to left, they've capitalized, and that's kind of what this Scranton team does. We talk about it. They're not a high-scoring goal team. They give up eight goals, but they can score that nine or ten, and that's what they need. And right now, they're sitting both teams at five, and we have just under six minutes to go in this second period. And we'll see what they can do. The Paros have to respond here, because if not, I think this can get out uh, too, too far out of hand, I should say, for the Paros, because it's been four of the last five goals have come from Scranton. And you don't want to let that happen, Justin. You don't want to fall two three and five on the season but as you mentioned the props are over a hundred goals on the season Scranton came into this game with only 72 so they're up to 77 and Justin as you mentioned early in this broadcast props their bread and butter so far this season has been scoring but they haven't been as proficient defensively Mel Rogers had a couple great stops down there but too many offensive attacks as this defense was allowing Stranton to just waltz right through, and eventually you're going to break down, and the Profs have done it twice so far in this second period. 5-5 five, five game, 5.50 to go before halftime, and Stranton again on the attack. It's Hewitt, who's been a pain in the Rowan side all game long. Now under the goal, behind the goal, is Aaron Rich for Scranton. Trying to pass it over her defender. Had a cutter, but doesn't take it. Another cutter develops. She's going to try to clear it out by herself. Pass behind the goal. And that one is up and through. Grace Lane able to score again for Scranton. And they take their first lead of the game at 6-5. Yeah, it takes 40 seconds off the clock for them to get another goal on the board. And it's who else? But Lane, I mean, again, a lot of times as we talk about it, momentum shifts and the momentum is on their side now. I mean, they've looked relatively successful on all spots and especially when they get a free look like they're going to get right there. You can't get a better opportunity and the Royals, after early misses, have not looked like the same team we saw in that first period. Grace Lane, the junior out of Long Beach, New York, and Justin, a 3-0 advantage for the Scranton Royals in this second period after the first period was mostly dominated by the Profs. Molly Green looking to answer for Rowan, and we get a stoppage. Looks like far side up near the yellow line. Looks to be a green card handed out there to Hewitt. She's won the one running off. So I, looked, I think she kind of swiped at Green from behind with the stick. So she earned the card, but I, I kind of like the pace that Molly Green was kind of going at, especially after you talk about a 3-0 run here in the period. you got to get the offense cooking, and with five minutes to go in the third period, or I should say second period, excuse me, you have to ignite some offense, whether it's a quick shot, cutters, anything they can get open, you got to take the look. Clear out here near side. Underneath the net. Looks like she lost it for a second, and it is picked up by Scranton. Picked up by Nicolina Morrow. Now Boldis able to clear out Scranton with a full head of steam up near midfield. And with two white jerseys chasing. 
Now near side into the attacking zone goes Alex Dato. Now it's Lane. Three goals on the game for Lane. Half of the Royal offense so far in this first half. They're looking to pad their lead and get some insurance. Is that pass is high looking for Rich, but she's able to retrieve it. Now back to the top, Kaylee Stalter had a shot attempt earlier in this game. That was no good. Ball movement for the Royals. Rowan has been on the defensive pretty much all period long, and that one is intercepted by Green. Looks like we have another penalty called on the far side. Check that intercepted by Montanero for the props. So Rowan will clear it. Tanner near side with two black jerseys near her. Props looking to get it up near midfield, and they do. Now past midfield, far side goes Shivo. Past the yellow line. Trying to dish it off. She does to Callista Burke. Now over to Gillen. Gillen pressed behind the net. Almost out of bounds, and the ball is loose. Looks like we have... A call here. They yeah, foul from behind there. They again swipe from behind, trying to keep her out of play was Gillen on that back line, but key things here for the profs. 6-5, Scranton leads Rowan. Under three to play, 256 in this second period. Burke, the dish, and that shot is up, and it's stopped by Boldis. Fiona Lockhart tried to put it in for the profs, but she could not. Scranton able to stand stout. Boldis looking for something to develop to try to get the ball out. She's able to dump it off underneath to Devin Tanajewski. Now here near side, Lopez spins past midfield. That pass is Aaron looking for Dato, but it's picked up by Molly McCarron. Now far side, Hewitt. Scranton already three goals in this second period looking to pad on as they've really taken this game over here in Glassboro. They slow the pace down, looking for either a cutter or just some pass to clear it out. Rowan trying to stay stout, and Lopez tries to put it up, and she cannot. It's stopped by Rogers. Another stop there from Rogers. Lopez. Kryptonite has been Rodgers. She's taken about three or four shots inside. They haven't worked, and it's a good thing that Rodgers can hold up now, but the Profs look to push on this side of things. A minute and a half to play in this second period. 6-5, Rowan looking to tie it. Now that pass is high and out of bounds. That's intended for O'Brien behind the net, so Scranton will take over. A little over a minute to play. They're out near side. Alex Dato. Trying to clear it, and she does. Now into the glove of Hewitt near side. Midfield. Scranton into the glove of Jillian Lopez. She's been on the attack for Scranton this past couple of possessions. She's swarmed by two white jerseys. Looks like we're going to get a foul call. Leave on Elena Corson. I think it's on Green if she's the one running off. That'd be another green card. This time to the Profs. Just under 32 seconds. Great for the Profs to get a stop here to keep it at that one goal disadvantage heading into the half if they could do so. We will resume. Lopez past the yellow line. Full head of steam, not much time to go as Scranton trying to tack on and make it a two-goal lead. Grace Lane, who scored three already for the Royals. Now the dish in, pass far side. Royals looking to capitalize back into the glove of Lane. The cutter and the shot is up, and it's... No good. 
believe Rogers somehow snagged that. Kind of some, didn't see where the ball landed, but it was inside the stick. So great play there from Rogers to keep it at a one goal, uh, six five. But yeah, definitely was a wacky one there, Tom, to end it off the half. Yeah, strange last shot attempt there from Erin Rich as she was bidding for her second goal. Scranton six, Rowan five. Justin the Profs had that advantage early on, but Scranton able to answer, and they lead it by one here at the half. Yeah, we've seen Grace Lane kind of find her rhythm, and now her, I want to say, fifth game with three or more goals this season. She has four back in the first game against Messiah, seven goals against Ithaca back on the 25th of February, three against Haverford, five against Stevenson, and she now has another hat trick to join along her stellar season, 23 goals, and it's been a lot of empty looks from the Profs, especially in that second period where, again, in the first period it looked like they were the, the team to beat here. And it, it's kind of the team that we see when they do lose is this kind of that unit in that second period where they just seemed a little bit sluggish. It seemed like the, the, the Royals were pushing everything and they were getting great looks, great cuts, catching Rodgers, sleeping when she goes into the left side of the goal. And the bounce shot has worked for the Royals. They've, they've used it, utilized it to their best benefit, and... That's why they had the lead here, 6-5. They got on the board back with around five minutes left here in the period, and they've never looked back. And again, there's plenty of time. You obviously have 15 minutes in the third, 15 minutes in the fourth. There's, anything can happen, but if the profs don't come out of the half uh, with some different change of direction, it, it could end up being the fifth loss of the season. Could be, and you don't want to fall two games below 500. After the first period, props let it. 5-3 Scranton with a 3-0 second period. That's where we stand. Scranton 6, Rowan 5. Alongside my broadcast partner, Justin Locke, I'm Tom Hill. We'll be right back here on Rowan Athletics.
thing is, um, just one other one. Or, um, yeah. Oh, let me try that.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Back here for second half action on Rowan Athletics, women's lacrosse. The Rowan Profs taking on the Scranton Royals. Rowan trails 6-5 as we're just about getting going here underway in second, the second half alongside my broadcast partner, Justin Locke. I'm Tom Hill. Profs led it 5-3 after the first period, but Scranton able to surge back with three goals in that second period, and that's where we stand, 6-5. The score is we have a draw here at midfield. Hannah Lombardo, and it's won by the Profs. And it's picked up by Shibo, who's running near side. Profs now moving right to left on the timeline. Scranton moving left to right. Shibo into the glove of Elena Corson. Corson's been quiet so far in this game. It's done a lot of the scoring earlier this season for the Profs, but Scranton able to hold her in check. Now back to Lombardo, trying to get her defender off her block, and she cannot, so she'll just dish it out to Riley O'Brien. O'Brien the dish, far side to Molly Green. Green has an angle, now cuts in, and the toss in, and the shot is up no good. As Corson tried to put it up and in, right on cue we talked, about the quiet day for her so far, but looking to tie it at six, but Scranton able to take it the other way. Jillian Lopez up past midfield. Now the Royals on the attack. Lopez tries to split the defenders. Pressed by Lombardo. Near the out of bounds, and we're gonna get a foul call. This looks like Lombardo shoved her. Yeah, it's tough to defend on that back line. Clear out, Rich. Over to Tenajeski. Tenajeski had an assist earlier in this game. Eileen Hewitt, she's done a lot of the scoring for the Royals. Now a full head of steam. That's one that's up and through. Eileen Hewitt with goal number three. And the Royals. Add on insurance, they lead it seven to five. Now you got two girls with the hat trick and they've got more goals combined than the whole Profs team. And it's Lane and Hewick at every angle, finding Red what they can do. And 19, we talked about Hewitt. Rogers early was doing really well adjusting and now we kind of see the, the speed pick up, especially on the initial shot attempt. It was a, a heater and it got by the stick of Rogers and was once a four goal game, 5-1, is now 7-5 in favor of Scranton. Ever since the end of that first period, Justin, the Scranton Royals have really taken over. And Justin, you mentioned if Rowan was unable to try to stop them or at least get them off that full head of steam as we've seen offensively from them, it can get out of hand fast. And Scranton trying to pad on even more. Jillian Lopez splits the defenders and the dish, in, it looks like it's intercepted by the Profs. So taking it the other way is Green. Green near side. Profs looking to answer. Yeah, it would be great for Profs to get back on the board. It's been quite a long time since they've got getting now 18 plus minutes that they've gotten on the board. And that one's dropped. Far side by O'Brien. Didn't have the angle, now looking for a pass. Defended well. Now finally gets it off. Props now behind the net, and that one's off the stick of Lombardo. And Scranton will take it the other way into the stick of Tanajeski. Now the clear out. Scranton running up past midfield as that ball is out of the stick of Lopez. 
Now Rowan will take over. Montanero has it on the defensive for Rowan. Now running far side is Shibo. She gets it past midfield. Another clear out. Rowan now near side into the glove of Molly Green. Now past the yellow line. Dish here to Corson. She had a shot attempt on that last offensive drive that the Profs put together. Ball loose. Now Corson able to dish it off to Gillen. Behind the net, Profs looking for something to develop. And that one is over the glove of Lombardo. And a fight for it here near the yellow line. And it's picked up by Scranton. Aaron Rich has it for the Royals. Able to give it off to Tanajeski. Tanajeski on the attack. Has an assist earlier in this game. Splits three Rowan defenders and that ball is loose. I think a foul is called. Right near the goal. It's the Royals trying to add their second here in this third period and go up eight to five. This should be another free position shot look and see what Tanajewski can do here against Rodgers on that right side she's shading towards. Running shot is up and it is through. Devin Tanajewski, the senior out of Ringwood, New Jersey, and it's been all Scranton. They lead it eight to five. Yeah, another great look on the free position. We talked about early looks from the profs when they didn't capitalize on it. And ever since the Royals, the if they get a look Devin inside, if it's a free position, if it's a backdoor cut fine, they, they do it. And it has been all scranton here from the initial start of the second period on. And it's now a three goal advantage. You have three goals in that second period for the Royals, two so far in the early going here in this third period. And Justin Rowan hasn't been on the attack as much as we saw earlier in this game. It's not for a lack of aggression. Scranton just able to read their passes and their cuts better on their defensive side. And as Rowan is trying to get back into this, it's going to be a tough contest. Down three already. And Scranton with all the momentum so far in this game. Yeah, it's a prof team that second ranked in the preseason poll for the NJAC. And... They're now ranked fifth of six in the standing, so they, they've got a lot of pressure on their hands, and the schedule will only get harder as they eventually will go against Kane and Montclair State and Ramapo at the end of the year. And then the juggernaut TCNJ has won 12 of the 13 last NJAC championships. So the, the, the future ahead now, especially if you do somehow not win today, you, you have to think, okay, where are these wins going to come from as you kind of push towards that crucial April month where you play every team inside your conference. I'm trying to take care of business here at home, but it's tall task down three. Molly Green full head of steam near side. Now she has something developing. Give to Corson. Now back behind the net is Gillen back to Corson. Ball movement for the props. Molly Green, they're going to clear it out near side. Yasmin Harris into the game for the first time for the Profs, and Green had the cut, and it looks like a foul is called. I believe on Scranton. Looks like we're going to get a free throw for Rowan. Molly Green looking to get Rowan on the board for the first time since the first period. She runs it up, and that one is up and in. Molly Green able to score the goal for the Profs, try to cut into that deficit. It's now 8-6. to six. And they do it off the bounce, and that's kind of what I like to see there off the preposition. Molly Green comes off left side, right to, directly there at Boldis. And after a long time, the Profs back on the board. Great sign, but you got more work cut out for you. You're down by two. You have plenty of time, 10 minutes here in the period, as well as 15 more in the fourth. If the Profs could somehow match this, get it to at least a one goal deficit by the end of the, the third, this could be a game where you talk about the comeback after initially looked like it was going to be an easy one after that first. Yeah, Hannah Lombardo with two. Molly Green now with a pair for the Profs as both players have multi-goals 
scored in this game for Rowan. Gillen with a goal as well as Callista Burke. So four prof players have scored so far in this game. 8-6, props trail by two. Ten minutes to play in this third period. Looks like we have a foul called as Shibo tried to clear it out. Now the props really pushing the pace. Burke, far side. And we have another clock stoppage. I believe a foul is called on Scranton. There was also a sub there. O'Brien comes off for Rowan. I think that was kind of the, I think that O'Brien was the one to one to walk off there. Rowan looking to answer to make this a one goal game. Burke to clear it out. Now back near the yellow line. Yasmin Harris, the dish to Green. Now near side, the goal. Underneath the goal is Gillen. Ball movement for the profs. Green trying to push the pace in the past to Harris is Aaron, but it's into the hands of Lombardo. Lombardo able to pass it in. Burke trying to make her move. Now the clear out behind the net is Lowry. Back to Green with two Scranton players hounding her, and that shot is up, and it is saved by Boldus. A phenomenal save, as that was a bullet from Green. She couldn't score, so the Royals will take it the other way. Shannon D. Domenica up ahead for the Royals. She lost it for a second, and it's into the stick of Green, but we have, I believe, a foul called. It's a green card there against Maya McCarron. She's the one walking to the sideline. So Pearl saw possession at midfield. See what they can do here after the green card. 8-6, Eight, 844 mark here in this third period. Rowan trying to push. Harris near side. Dish to Gillen. Now behind the net go the props. Larry up ahead. Now they'll clear it out back to Harris looking for something to develop. Tries to split the defender. She does not clear out to Green. She's already scored in this period for the props. Looking to add on potentially or set something up for somebody else. Props trying to get back into this one. As swarmed as Lombardo, she drops the ball. And now it's picked up far side into the hands of Gillen. Now back out to Green, near side. Ball movement for the profs. Looking for a cutter and Burke and she's able to put it in. 8-7, the profs are right back in it. That time Burke, she stunts left, spins right and she throws in a heater there, a rocket to the right side of the goal. Now I'm liking what I'm seeing from the profs here. Two goals in the last two and a half minutes. That's what you need to do and that's well, we saw earlier in the game, but they kind of took their foot off the gas. They thought they had an easier one. But Scran showed them off, and now 8-7. This is a, again, a winnable look game here that you have to think about if you're rowing because Scran, 4-2, they're chilling in the middle half of the Landmark Conference, fourth place out of 10 teams. There's only six teams in the end, Jack, so only four make the conference playoffs. Right now you're in fifth, so you have to try to pick things up and what a way it would be if they can somehow muster up a win here. Goal number 21 on the season for Callista Burke. Yasmin Harris with the assist. 8-7 game. Props trailed by three now. Only trailed by one with a little under eight to go here in this third period. And the props are able to control possession. Far side for the props. Sydney Helmick. Right near the sideline, looking for something to open up. Green and Burke with goals for the profs, trying to potentially tie this one up at eight. Looking for a passing lane is Gillen, and she spins around, somehow gets around her defenders, and she scores! Gillen with her second goal of the game, and we're tied at eight. That's what I'm talking about. Three goals, that time it only took 32 seconds off the clock, Gillen. Gets past two black jerseys, spins. And I think Boldus didn't think it was going to be an open look that time for Gillen, but it was. And we're seeing multiple girls find their second goal of the afternoon. Big time shots. And 
We've seen the Profs different type of players make big time plays and they've done it here and now we're back up even at eight apiece. Trish Gillen joins Hannah Lombardo, Molly Green and Callista Burke as all four girls have the scoring so far in this game for the Profs and after trailing by three, Justin, as you mentioned, they have answered 8-8. Eight, eight. We're all lockstep here at the 724 mark in this third period. And a draw coming at midfield. It's won by the Profs. Trying to attack here is Lombardo moving near side. And the dish to Gillen. Sworn by two black jerseys. Now the clear out to Lombardo. Slowing the pace down, Harris. Full head of steam, she lost it, but it's a foul called and a blatant foul on Scranton. As Harris hit the deck, foul called on Devin Tenajeski. Back here, Lombardo near side. Clear out back to Harris. Looking for someone to dish it off to, and she gets it to Green. Back out to Harris. Rowan has been on the attack for a large portion of this third period. Trying to take the lead here and score four unanswered. Something developed for a second, but now a dish off to Green. Back to Harris at the top. Moving right, and that ball is lifted up in the air, and having to retrieve it is Callista Burke, and she does, far side. Yeah, a great defensive effort there from Hewick from the backside. She's kind of swatted that Harris shot initially. High pass from Gillen is brought down by Harris. Now near the goal. Burke now over to Green. Stunted. Now spins left. Burke, excuse me, Green now still spinning. Molly Green, that one's up, and it's no good, but it looks like we have a foul called right near the net. Green, multiple spins on that journey, try to get the shot off. And the Profs use 82 seconds of the shot clock there and see what Molly Green could do here. Would set up huge free position shot, would take the lead. Haven't had the lead in a while since back in the second period. So let's see if Green go for a hat trick would be the first Prof to do it today. Molly Green looking to give the props the lead at 9-8. Running start, and it bounces up, and it's no good. So Scranton able to not give up the goal, but we have a foul called away from the ball. Looks like Scranton is able to get on it. So that shot from Green is wide left. I believe they reversed it. I think because it was a shove from behind, I don't think they initially called that, but looking at it now, I believe the Paros will have possession, but looks like they're gonna talk it over. So again, five and a half minutes here, time here in the third. That shot was a, another close one, uh, just wide left. Just wide left, Scranton able to stand at least for the time being after really being on the ropes. Boldus allowed three straight unanswered goals to the Profs. An 8-5 deficit now, 8-8 eight, eight tie. 5.42 to play here in this third period. If you're just tuned in, Tom Hill, Justin Locke on the call. Rowan Athletics, Rowan Women's Lacrosse taking on the Scranton Royals. Rowan coming in with a three and four record. Scranton at four and two. Last game for Scranton was an 18-16 win over Stevenson. Props defeated Clarkson 18-4. Both teams can score. Both teams have scored so far in this game. About 20 minutes of game action left. We still have not resumed game action here. I believe it was a shot clock issue there trying to run it down and put it at 74, so resume play now. And now we resume. Props looking to attack, and that one is dropped.
by Burke, and they get it to Boldis. So Scranton able to stand on that offensive drive by the props. Burke is hounding Boldis, the goalie, for Scranton. Just to come out of the net, Justin, as you mentioned, risky proposition there. She's able to clear it, and the pass is Erin, but it's into the hands of Tanajewski, and she falls to the ground. That foul is going to be called. I believe that's on Callista Burke. Yeah, it was again, that was a swipe. They tried to run down the clock. It was, I believe, 25 seconds to run off from there. Uh, Boulder's trying to get around Burke and O'Brien near side, and they'll get it back to 90. So we'll see what they can do. Again, kind of with this advantage after that green card with Burke going to the sideline. 8-8 eight, eight game, 4.53 to play here in this third period. Another clock stoppage here after the foul. Bullet of steam, and that ball is dropped. It's popped up in the air. Who's going to get it? And it's going to be the props into the glove of course, and We have another stoppage, and on the ground, we have an injured player for Scranton. Yeah, Molly McCarron looks to be the one down there for Scran, she kind of collided there from the backside. Hope she's okay. She's getting checked out by the training staff. But it's always a scary sight to see two girls collide. She kind of threw the stick down Amelia, so definitely not a just a little bruise there for her. See what they can see. But for Scranton, uh, McCarron's going to be a key piece for them. Midfielder of junior has contributed a lot, especially in the assist category. She's top three on the team. and. She's definitely kept uh, open looks here, so if she can get back up and play for them. It's it's huge spot. If not, it's a huge loss here in this game against Rowan right now. It's, it's a tied game, 8-8. Tied game in this game, and training staff still looking at McCarron. It looks like she's going to be aided off the field. 445 mark here in this third period. Justin, back and forth game. Profs looking to take advantage, and it's been a game of swings. So we've seen back and forth when Rowan has momentum, Scranton able to answer, and then when Scranton has momentum, Rowan was able to answer and fight back from a three-goal deficit. That's where we stand at 8-8, eight, eight, and four players in particular for the Profs, Trish Gillen, Hannah Lombardo, Molly Green, and Callista Burke, all of them with two goals, Gillen has an assist as well. Profs looking to take advantage. As we mentioned right before halftime, this game will not end at a 6-5 score, and it has not. And we're in store for more scoring in all likelihood from both squads as we resume action here. Ball popped up into the air in the, to the hands of Lombardo. Yasmin Harris. Now finds a cutter, but now a clear out back to Corson. Corson, far side, stops. Now dishes it off. Ball movement for the props. Lowry pressed underneath. Now into the glove of Lombardo. Back to Lowry. Another great shooting angle, so they're able to clear it out. It looks like we have a foul called as the cutter green was looking to put it in. But we have a foul called and looks like we're gonna get, I believe a free shot coming for the profs. Must be coursing on that right wing side of the perimeter. So, again, okay, we've seen some misses. We've seen some makes here in a free position. And that shot is up no good. It's swatted away by Boldis. She took a mean hit there going to her left and See if she gets another look at it because she couldn't really get a clean shot. She kind of either tripped over or she got tripped from a stick. And I think that's going to result in another look for her this time uh, down the middle instead of going right to left. Yeah, so we'll do it again. Elena Corson quiet so far on the afternoon. 
Coming in with the most points for the Profs, and she's able to add on. Elena Corson gives the Profs the lead at 9-8. She ties her lead back on this season with close to Burke now at 21 apiece. And it has been a great piece of work there from the Profs as of late. They've scored again four in a row here as it was down 8-5. Again, you talk about games, game of runs, that's kind of what it is. It, when a team is hot, that's what you need to... They capitalize on the Profs are hotter right now than they were, especially in that second period where they everything wasn't working, and now everything seems to be working. And even after the initial miss on the free position, they get it right back. And Corsi capitalizes, blazes a shot, passes that stick there of Boldis, and Profs back on top by one. Yeah, four unanswered for the Profs after trailing eight to five. They have outscored Scranton four to two so far in this third period. But now Scranton looking to get on the attack with about 3.45 to go in this third period. Scranton now down one to the glove of Tanajewski. The top now the clear out to Lane. Both Lane and Hewitt have been quiet this period. We've only seen two shots here from Scranton in the period compared to the four and four goals by the Pros. Hewitt tried to make a move, now she'll just dish it off. Two lane ball movement for Scranton, a high pass, and that one is up and no good as that shot attempt by Rich is stopped by Rogers. So the Profs will take control, they'll try to push it the other way. Yeah, the shot was pretty close, it rolled just in front of Rogers there in Montanero, and luckily for the Profs it was a good break because any more backswing on that ball, it would have been a, another tie game. Profs able to clear it up ahead. Katie Montanero, pass midfield as that pass is almost intercepted by Nicolina Morrow. But Harris able to retain it for the Profs. Now Montanero, ball movement for Rowan. It's Lombardo, near side. Looking for something to develop and Scranton able to get back defensively. High pass is corralled by Lombardo. Now back to Corson who just had the goal for the Profs to take the lead at 9-8 over to Harris. She dropped it, and it's picked up by Scranton, so they'll take it the other way. Yeah, trying newly, to Newly put in, sorry to cut you off there, Brooke Lynch with this, the interception. Trying to clear it out, and she eventually does with a little over two minutes to play here in this third period. Now up ahead is Hewitt. Now deep in the attacking zone with three white jerseys near her. She'll just dish it off to Lane. Didn't have the angle, so they'll clear it out back underneath the net. Far side. Now up to Tanajewski at the top of the point. Over to Rich. Doesn't have a shooting angle, trying to look for a cutter. Rowan tries to stay stout defensively and hold and maintain their one goal lead. She finds the cutter in lane and that shot is up and through. Grace Lane with another one, and we're tied at nine. You talked about Lane being silent for a while. She wasn't silent for too long after that, and that time wasn't the easiest angle. She was Good throwing that right line. angled that side, and Lane. again, Rogers didn't think she was going to get that look, and she did, and I believe that's her fourth goal of the afternoon, and she's had multiple, four or more. Again, she had seven back a month, almost a month ago on the 25th against Itzka, and she's now with four here against the Profs here on the road. Yeah, four goals put her up to 25 on the season. The assist by Aaron Rich, so we are all tied up at nine with a minute and a half to play here in this third period. Face-off coming, or draw coming at midfield. Profs trying to take advantage here. So they've been on the attack for a large portion of this third period. As that one's up in the air and into the glove of Lopez. Far side, trying to give Scranton the lead. About a minute 20 to go in this third period. Rich over to Tanajewski. Now into the glove of Lane, trying to bid for goal number five, nothing developed. Now the dish off to Rich. Clear out for Scranton. 
Making a move and cutting is Stalter. Now the dish back to Lopez. Lopez kind of curls around. 38 seconds to go here in this game. And that shot is up no good. A nice stop by Rogers, but Scranton able to retain it. Rich looking for something. She gets it off to Lane. So it looks like the Royals will try to settle for the final shot if they can get it off. To the goal, and that bounce pass, that bounce shot is up. I should say by Stalter, that's no good. And it's still retained by Scranton. That shot, awkward looking shot is no good. Fielded by Hewitt, now over to Lane. Royals have to try to put something up here with the clock expiring. Lane makes a move, she cannot put it in as that shot is wide. And it looks like that will do it here in the third period. So Rowan able to wake up offensively. We are all tied up at nine. Tom Hill, Justin Locke will be right back here on Rowan Athletics. Back here for period four, here in Glassboro, the Rowan Profs, women's lacrosse team taking on the Scranton Royals. Rowan, Scranton tied up at nine, a lot of scoring so far in the first three periods alongside my broadcast partner, Justin Locke. I am Tom Hill, and Justin, we've seen a lot of scoring. That's what we've seen all season long in the early going for the Profs, and in order to take advantage in this fourth period and come away here at home with a victory, the Profs need to score. Yeah, the Profs did a good job defensively, I would say, kind of in that later half where they only faced six shots, Rogers did, compared to 12 in the first period, 11 in the second. And the Profs just seemed more aggressive, and that's kind of what they needed to do, especially on that four-goal run where it was 8-5, and then it was 9-8. And then we kind of saw uh, Lane, Grace Lane, kind of find her rhythm again. And we have three, go three, uh, three 20, or I can't even talk, sorry, three goals. I, I still can't say what I'm trying to say. Three girls with 20 goals or more on the season. That's what I tried to say. Okay. And it's, it's been a dominant effort all around, and that's what we've seen here on both sides of the ball, offensively and defensively. Props able to win the draw. Now bouncing it near side is Montanero. Props moving left to right on the timeline. Scranton moving right to left, and it's fielded by Hewitt. Yeah, who made a good play there on the swipe, got it away there from Props, and... Again, both teams tied up at nine. We should be in for a great fourth period here, Tom. Marina Rucker able to clear it. Now to midfield. McCarron, who took that shot earlier, and the ball is loose and into the hands of Rowan. High pass is pulled in by Gillen. She had a cutter in Lowry, 
ball is loose. Now it's picked up at the top of the point. Now a clear out to Callista Burke, near side. Back into Gillen. She has a pair of goals on the afternoon. Burke up ahead. Lombardo makes a move. Now a lob pass into Gillen. Ball movement for the props. Lowry underneath. Try to make a cut, and we got a foul called. I believe that's on Rucker. Yeah, it looked to be Rucker from behind. Lowry was the the driver, and shove it back on that right side parallel of the goal. See what Pross can draw up here with plenty of time on the shot clock. 56 seconds on the shot clock, just underway in this fourth period. Rowan looking to get in double digits, but more importantly, take. The one goal lead at 10-9. Burke near side finds the cutter. And now she'll just try to clear it out. As there was a host of Scranton jerseys in the area, but it is cleared out by Burke. She's trying to put it in was Riley O'Brien, but she could not. So the props will just reset. Lowry over to Gillen, circling around the net on the far side. Rowan looking to create something here and that passes Aaron but it's fielded by O'Brien and now a fight for it and Scranton is able to win the fight taking it up ahead the other way is Jessica McCabe for Scranton and now that pass into the glove of Rich up ahead Rowan able to track it and get back defensively underneath the net Scranton looking to score as well. We're down 9-8, Grace Lane with her fourth goal of the afternoon. She's been a thorn in the prop side. She's been a big time player for the Royals all season long. Royals looking to answer here. They have a threat going on right near the Rowan goalie, Mel Rogers. Cutter, Jillian Lopez, that shot is up and through. Jillian Lopez gives the Royals the lead at 10-9. Lopez, her first goal of the afternoon, a timely one, and does it at a good rate, her fourth of the season. And again, another bounce shot converts here against Rodgers, which we've seen. Got six of the Jillian 10 goals Lopez. have been on the bounce shot, especially we talk about it. It's more of Rodgers' right and not Rodgers' left, and that's what she does there again. Lopez, instead of going for the heater straight up, she goes for the bounce, and... It's it to fall. Lopez, the freshman out of Sayville, New York. Scranton able to get into double digits first at 10-9. A lot of their scoring, at least in the first three periods, from Grace Lane with four and Eileen Hewitt with three. But now Julian Lopez has a goal to join Aaron Rich, who also has a goal of her own. So 10-9, Royals lead it by one. We have a timeout on the field just underway 12 10 mark here in this fourth period so a little under three gone if you're just joining us tom hill justin Locke on the call rowan athletics rowan women's lacrosse coming in at three and four looking to go 500 on the season justin this is a big game here at home yeah i mean and again the scran team they've scored 10 or uh, 10 goals or more now in five of their seven games after they've won four so in the other four games, they put up 10. They did walk away with the victory. So it's kind of something to look at. And for Rowan, they average around 14 goals a game, but they're three and four, as you touched on. And that's kind of uh, right here where they're going to have to probably put on 11, maybe 12 to walk out of here with the victory, especially with the pace we're seeing from both sides. And that's what we've seen all afternoon. It has been a game of runs. And now Scranton has the, the run back here with that, that shot from Lopez and if Scranton tags on another one, it's going to be very hard for the Prost to string another two or three goals to walk a lot out of here with Glassboro with another victory. Especially with time waning down. And it seems like when one team is on the attack, they just keep on attacking. And Rowan looking to take over as both teams, Justin, as we've mentioned all broadcast long, it's been like a pendulum just swinging back and forth with the momentum. So the Profs, before they take lead they got to try to tie this one put together a good offensive look here out of the draw we have Prost so far at home in Glassboro they're one and two they won their 
first one back on the 24th of February, but ever since they have lost their last two, one in the rain, that was against Washington College, a high scoring affair. And they lost against Skidmore back 14-8. Battle for the ball, who's gonna get it? It's into the hands of Montanero, so Rowan able to win it. Now we'll clear out near side, up ahead, into the stick of Callista Burke. He's running near side, hounded by Dato. Looks like we got a foul called on Burke. And she hits the ball carrier, Dato. Yeah, the initial foul, I think, was Burke kind of pushed off with the stick, maybe with the offhand. And oh, and a phenomenal defensive play there by Molly Green, trying to attack and answer, so using defense to try to create offense for the props. Lombardo looking to set up something offensively for Rowan. Burke near side. Slowing the pace down, looking to get something going for Rowan to try to tie this one up. But head to Gillen. Bad angle for a shot, so she'll just dish it off. Props moving the ball around Lombardo. At the top, Burke near side, tries to make her move on Hewitt, but now a second defender stunts in, so Gillen will try to clear out circle around the net, and she does. Up ahead to Elena Corson, a spin move by Corson, weaves, the shot is wide. And it looks like we got a foul, an offensive foul on Corson, so the Royals will take it up ahead the other way. McCarron tries to push the pace. She'll clear it back to Dato. Dato looking for something to develop and eventually it does. Eileen Hewitt able to rush ahead for the Royals in a full head of steam as Rowan tries to converge and get back defensively and they eventually do but Hewitt keeps on running, keeps on moving but that shot is up no good. Looks like we have a foul called, I believe that's on Scranton. Yeah, Hewitt went over the line again inside the inner circle there in front of Rogers. So Rogers able to clear it out. Scranton looking to pad on and make it an 11 to nine game, but they could not. So Rowan looking to answer again. They had something develop last offensive drive, trying to create something here, and we get a foul called on O'Brien. Believe that foul is called on Stalter. I actually think that's on Grace Lane. She's the one walking off off the green card. Kind of pushed O'Brien from the backside. So Lane gets the call. Clock stoppage at 9.45. Scranton 10, Rowan 9. Gonna resume here. Near side. And we resume. Montanaro past midfield for the props. Up ahead. Rowan looking to answer. Here the goal is Gillen. Looks like they're gonna bounce it the opposite way. Typically they go right to left. Now they're swinging it around. Gillen had a look there. Now she's gonna shoot it up and it's no good. Wide left. But it's retrieved by the props into the glove of Corson. Now back to Lombardo. Ball movement for Rowan. Burke with the defender in her face. Callista Burke drops the ball. And who's gonna get it? It looks like it's Hewitt. So a turnover there for Rowan, but another fight for the ball. It's loose again, and Lombardo picks it up. So Rowan able to retain, and she scoops it up. Now under, past the yellow line, and we have a foul called. I believe we had a whistle there, but we'll just resume play. Gillen to Burke. Ball movement for the profs. Crossfield pass to Corson. Now into Lowry. Underneath. Rowan looking to answer, and that shot is up and through. Rowan able to answer. 10 10. We're tied. Look to be Fiona Lockhart, if I'm correct there on the shot. She did a nice wrap around on the play, and it's a good play from her, and it's a great way to tie this game back up. Double Rose digits for both. Six, and Lockhart's had a couple successful games this year. She's been relatively quiet today, but again, we talk about uh, 
Lopez's goal on the other end was a timely one, her first of the afternoon. Lockhart the same. It's again, the hero's not always gonna be your top goal scorer, but Lockhart is one of your top goal scorers. She's ranked fourth on this team, this round 15 now, and she does it at a great time. There's still 8.22 left here, and it has been back and forth, back and forth here, Tom. Yeah, Fiona Lockhart with 14 goals. That was fourth on the props team, and Justin, as you mentioned, quiet day so far, but she's able to tie us at 10, 8.28 mark in this fourth period. Scranton able to retain it. Near side, Lopez, she had the goal earlier in this period for the Royals. Underneath the net she goes. Now a clear out far side. Rich looks for something and she gets it to Tanajeski. Ball movement for the Royals. Now near side. Underneath the net. Royals led 10-9. Props just tied it. Royals on the attack looking to take the lead potentially. And she trips and falls and the ball is loose and it's picked up by Rowan. They'll take it the other way. Picked up by Lombardo with a full head of steam. Coast to coast and we have a Scranton player down on the other end, still down and hobbling, but their props are looking to score. And now we have a stoppage. So the turnover was by Tanajeski on the other side, and Rowan was looking to attack, but we get a stoppage here at the 7.38 mark. Yeah, she initially went down and didn't. She kind of took a good 30 or so seconds to kind of get up, and the props were pushed in the other direction. Good thing she, she's up and good. And without a props on this side of things, it'd be great to score back here if you just did by Lockhart. Rowan looking to take the lead and score two in a row. Clear behind the net. Lockhart had an angle, now she'll just clear it out to Lombardo. Dish, far side to Corson. Props looking to score here. Ran a lot of offensive looks underneath the net and then they keep on clearing it out and kind of using passing to set up cutters. Lowry, the dish. Profs looking to take the lead. Corson spins now with two black jerseys hounding her. Spins again. Pass for Lowry. And now into Gillen. She had a lane and an angle to shoot, but it's closed up. So now she's looking to pass. Swarmed by Eileen Hewitt. She's able to get it out to Burke. Burke the dish into Lowry. Something closes up there, shot clock at seven. Rowan has to get it up and they cannot and it's in to the glove of, and that one's shot and it's up and through. Rowan able to answer with the shot clock running down. I, Aline Corson is able to give the props the lead at 11 to 10. Hit back, 22nd goal of the season for her and she's six on the end jack for a reason and goal scored and she's kept it higher and higher and again, that's how you talked about it. The initial shot was a miss, but the recovery, Gillen dishes it off into Corson with one exactly on the shot clock and it's perfection. And the Profs are on a little bit of momentum shift here and they just gotta hold it off for 6.18. They get another one for insurance. That's what you need, but right now 11-10, Profs are on top. And after they were down by 3.8 to five, they were up 9-8 and it was tied, tied. Then they were down by one and now they're back up by one but it's not over till it's over. There's plenty of time. The Royals have been stellar when they get things going. And you can't allow them to go back the other way and score. Elena Corson, quiet early, Justin, now up to two goals. Trish Gillen, two goals and now two assists on the game. Props lead at 11 to 10 with 6-10 to play here in this ball game. So get whistle away from it. So the props will clear it. Molly Green running near side. She's able to clear it past the yellow line. And the pass is Aaron intended for Burke. And it's into the hands of Scranton. Able to clear it, Nicolina Morrow for the Royals. Now she passes it far side. Royals looking to race. Looks like we have a whistle stoppage, but it's picked up by Karina Rucker. Into the hands of Tanajeski. Pass downfield 
into the glove of Kaylee Stalter. Bounces it far side, picked up by both Burke and Montanaro. Now into the attacking zone go the Royals. Jillian Lopez, far side, Royals looking to tie this one at 11. And they'll slow the pace down. Far side for Scranton. It's being hounded by a prop, and now she makes her move, and we get a foul called on Rowan. It looks like we might get a free shot coming. Yeah, Helwick was the near side defender, kind of shoved her a couple of times, and yeah, you're all right. It's going to be a free position shot here against Rodgers. The shot is up, and it is through. Scoring the goal is Erin Rich, and we're tied at 11. Rich, her second goal of the afternoon, a pretty one, and that time the Prost did press up a little too much on defense. They gave up the easy foul, and when you give up an easy opportunity, you're going to give up an easy goal, and that's what happens there is Rich, her third shot on the afternoon, second goal, and does it at a great spot all year, and we're back tied not even a minute after the prof goal on the other end. As you mentioned, right when Rowan took that lead, Justin, 11 to 10. Still a lot of ball game to be played, so Rowan has to stay stout defensively and stay on the attack offensively. We're tied at 11-11, 4.40 to go in this fourth period. Can we see a lot of two goal runs? Looks like there's no timeout, but Again, we've seen two goals in a row by Rowan. We just saw one there by Scranton prior to this timeout. If you're Rowan, you can't allow another one. We talk, I kind of touched on maybe 12 goals would be it. I mean, if only one more goal is scored, 12 would be it. But if not, 13 might be the number now to kind of reach if you're either squad because who knows? Because if you go two goals in a row here for either team, I think that would be the, the dagger, and that's kind of what you need to do if you're either team. And a lot of the players that Rowan needed to watch for going into this game have really been doing it on the offensive for Scranton. Grace Lane with four goals, Eileen Hewitt with three, and Erin Rich also a multi-goal game as that one, that last goal she scored was her second. So timeout here, 11-11, 440 left in this fourth period. And as Justin mentioned, 12, you're not safe. You want to get up to 13, and whichever team in this last bit of time left in this fourth period can really get going would eventually win this game. So if you're rowing, you got to stay on the attack. And both goalies coming in, Mel Rogers, Lauren Boldis, have had moments where they've had their stops, but in the sport of lacrosse, you can only bend defensively as much as you can because eventually the players on the offensive will just score and we've seen a lot of scoring so far this season for the profs not as much from the Scranton Royals but they've scored in double digits today with 11 both teams in their last contests had 18 so both these teams can score and they have scored and as Justin mentioned 13 appears to be the quote unquote magic number to try to get a W here today. Yeah, when we look at it, both sides, especially in the goal, Boldis, she's faced less shots overall, but she's let more, technically more uh, goals with the percentage wise. 27% save percentage for her, but 56 for Rodgers, especially those early first period stops from Rodgers have got to be key. And she's faced 25 shots and only 11 have gone in, which speaks volumes to Rodgers, even though she has allowed 11. She stopped multiple key possessions that kind of gave the Profs looks that they had, and that's why they're in this game and not completely out of it. Faceoff comes, Profs win it here, but now it's picked up by Scranton into the hands of Jillian Lopez and able to clear it out is Hewitt running far side. Makes a spin. Now about 4.20 to play in this game. Rich just scored that last goal for the Royals. Looked to make a move, but now she's looking to pass. Tries to stunt 
get her defender off of her. She does not hear. And the dish. Lane looking to create something. Now back under the net. Using up a lot of the clock. A spin move by Rich. Looking for a pass here. Shooting lanes have not developed. And that shot is up and it's off the crossbar. And it's retained and corralled to fight for it. Who's going to get it? It looks like it's into the glove of a prof. That was dangerously close to a goal. But an errant pass is reeled in by Grace Lane. So Lane with a full head of steam. Looks like she's going to circle it back up to the top to clear something up. Royals have used a lot of time here so far. A little over three to play in this game. Not a lot of time left for either side. Stalter. Her shot is up, and that one's through. Kaylee Stalter gives the Royals the lead at 12-11, her first goal of the afternoon. Yeah, timing went off the initial block down from Rogers. It was kept in front, but it kind of ricocheted off and gets in there is big timely goal, takes the lead back, the 12th here in the afternoon of Scranton. It's our third highest goals scored in a season. Obviously put up 18 back last game out. But for the Prost now, the pressure's on you. It, it, you have to go back down and score and whoever it is, just have to attack at the best moment. Because now, if you want to do it in a regular time, you got to score two goals with under three minutes to go, which is a tall task too, but we've seen it multiple times from both squads. Props have been scoring all year long, and this is the time where they really have to now, but Scranton able to win it into the glove of Hewitt. Let's see if Rowan tries to intercept one of these passes because they need the ball back to try to get an opportunity to tie this. Stalter. Just had that last goal for the Royals. Clears it to Hewitt near side. 2.28 to go in this game. And that one's lost and picked up by the props. They're taking it up ahead the other way. Molly Green, far side for Rowan. Scranton able to get back defensively. Rowan looking to set something up for a potential tie. A little over two minutes to go here in this game. Rowan down 12-11. Lombardo, near side. Now ball movement, Burke over to Corson. As the Profs just looking to pass it around. Lowry made a move for a second, tries to spin in. And a tough look here, and it's intercepted by Scranton. Up ahead, near side. The Royals will take it. And Burke tries to hound the ball carrier Dato, but she's able to get it up ahead midfield to Hewitt. Hewitt up ahead. Now the clear out far side, minute 26 to go in this game. To the glove of Tanajewski. And looks like we have clock stoppage here. I believe we have a timeout called by Scranton. So 12-11 with on the field, minute 15 to play here in this game. And Justin, I would say about 46 second difference shot clock to game clock, or actually about a 26 second difference, I should say. My math was wrong. So if you're Rowan, they can't, Scranton cannot drain the clock out, but obviously you want to go for a steal to try to clear it out down the other side of the field and set up your offense. It looks like as much as Rowan has scored 11 goals in this game and they've had a great deal of success scoring, a lot of that has been in the creation and the cutting and setting up. It just hasn't felt like individuals have really gotten going unless they've created foul shot opportunities or free shot opportunities, I should say. So if you're Rowan, it's imperative for you to get a stop on the defensive side to try to at least get a shot to tie this. Yeah, a lot of times we've seen Molly Green kind of been that near side defender that's been able to kind of pick it from behind, and that's kind of what you need here, it's especially 
when you're not really a fast-paced team, you like to kind of, as you said, kind of go into those sets and kind of see the opening, see the, see the backdoor cut, see the wraparound, see the bounce shot. And here with, again, as you talk about, about 26-second difference, if they run it all the way down and it's last shot, they miss, Rodgers throws it down, somebody has to go down the distance of the field and throw up pretty much a prayer. And, and you have to hope that you can kind of get coast to coast and around 15 to 20 seconds by the time Rodgers throws it to whoever she does, unless it is stolen, like you said. If it is, you have to turn around, you have to score within a minute, and we've seen it happen before, but a lot of times that first look that when you kind of run coast to coast is going to be your best look, and I think we've seen a lot of times Scran hasn't used it. But I think Rowan, if they get an opportunity, if it's Molly Green, if it's Burke, if it's Fiona Lockhart, Trish Gillen, whoever it is, I think you have to use the advantage and just run directly at boldest, your best chance going one-on-one, -on -one, instead of trying to kind of cut and avoid the multiple defenders. Go through the middle, see what you can do. You see multiple great shots from both teams, and I think Rowan, it's not over till it's over, and you, you can't count them out because you still got a minute and 19 seconds on the clock. Minute 19 to play in this ball game. 12-11, Scranton leads it in a back and forth contest down here in Glassboro. And we resume play. Hewitt underneath the net. Just races around and clears it to the glove of Jillian Lopez. Under a minute to play in this game. Scranton clinging to a one goal lead and we get a stoppage here and they'll keep playing it. Clear out back to Hewitt. Being pressed by Rowan defenders. Just doesn't look like there's a lot of attempts for Rowan to try to get the ball and it looks like now they will. And it's Molly Green as that ball was lost. So up ahead far side and that pass intended for Burke and she's able to get it. Gonna have to move, gonna have to hurry with 20 seconds to go. Rowan needs a goal and she loses the handle, but it looks like we're gonna get a foul called. So Rowan has to hurry here with 11. That shot is up, no good. Rowan able to get it back. That shot is no good. Boldus able to get on it and that will do it. Scranton 12, Rowan 11. Valiant effort on that last attempt there for the prospect. They are unable to capitalize. So Justin, a tough home loss for the props. 12-11 in a back and forth game against the Scranton Royals. Yeah, I almost called exactly what was gonna happen. Molly Green got the steal and it was Burke, the one that ran directly at Boulders. Her shot was a heater. It just, again, it was kept in front of her by Boulders. They almost got off the deflection. But overall, yeah, a game where you started it off, it was 5-1. It looked like it was Rowan's uh, game to lose, and it was their game to lose because they did. And it comes down to a lot of things of the runs from Scranton were just too much, especially that, that sequence where it was, I believe, 8-5 to five at a point where it looked like Rowan was out of it. Then they go back, they score four more, and it's 9-8. And then it was a couple goals back-to-back. -back. They tie it up again. And then the Prost had the lead for, I think, 42 seconds before... Another goal was scored, and it, it was by, I believe, Stalter was the game, the goal to kind of kick things back, and that's kind of what they needed. And Scranton, great team, 5-2 and two for a reason, and when they score 11 goals or more, they're perfect, 5-0, and, and that's kind of what they need to do. And for a team that is very fast-paced, they, they took a lot of shots against Rodgers. It's just a game where uh, Boldis didn't have the greatest save percentage night. It was... It was a lot of shots for her to see, and the Pross did well against her. She's not a, a, a goalie to kind of mess around with, and she's been a top goalie to start her all three years, freshman, sophomore, and now a junior. The Pross tried their best. They get another third of their fifth loss. Three of their five losses have come exactly with the one-goal deficit, and now they're one and three at home here in Glassford, which is kind of unheard of. A lot of times you're, you're, you're better at home, and you play a good team in, in the Royals, and they – they came to play, and that's why they walk away with the 12-11 victory in their 5-2. and two. Now probably going to raise in their landmark conference standings, but now the Profs most likely could fall to 6-6 six of six in the standings, which, again, we talk about April is when they kind of get into their conference uh, games. 
They play Kane, Ramapo, TCNJ, Montclair State, and Stockton is the other five teams. And you got a you got a tougher. I talked about it earlier, and now it's even tougher. You're you're three and five, and three of those losses have come within the blink of an eye. One goal difference, and especially this one where you had the lead in the fourth period with four minutes to go. Grace Lane with four goals. Eileen Hewitt with three. Aaron Rich with two. Stoltler had the goal at the end that put Scranton up, and that's the difference in the game as Scranton able to win this one 12-11 here down in Glassboro. Alongside my broadcast partner, Justin Locke, I'm Tom Hill. Once again, the final score, Scranton 12, Rowan 11. Thank you all for tuning in to Rowan Athletics, and have a great rest of your week.